A large bore safe triangle chest tube is rarely the best technique to treat a pleural effusion, except perhaps in torrentially bleeding patients. In most cases, your patients will be better served with an 8 French pigtail catheter. This is commonly used, but we'll demonstrate how you can use the in-plane Seldinger technique you already master from CBCs to achieve better tip placement, greater patient comfort, and better safety. My name is Robin Linden. And I'm Ola Borgqvist. We're anaesthetists and ICU consultants at Skåne University Hospital in Lund, Sweden. The concept of the safe triangle is not a safe way to place a chest tube. Anatomy varies and a blind drain can end up seriously wrong. Your puncture site should be determined with ultrasound, always. The puncture site should be ventral to the mid-axillary line for optimal patient comfort, as a patient lying on the dorsal drain will experience pain and may even develop pressure sores. The puncture will often be within the highlighted area, but the exact location is determined with ultrasound. Pleural fluid follows gravity, both in the semi-recumbent ICU patient and immobilized patients in the ward. Here's a drain with the entry site comfortably on the flank and the tip in the caudal dorsal position where the fluid will accumulate. So, here's how you place the drain. Move the patient's arm away from the field, either by stretching it over to the contralateral side or by retracting it backwards. Foil drape can be used to retract a large abdomen, or as in this case, a large bosom. Place the ultrasound machine on the contralateral side of the bed. Have your equipment within reach for your dominant hand and raise the gurney to a suitable level. Good ergonomics is key for good results. A pre-scan before prepping confirms pleural effusion and locates the optimal puncture site. A cardiac or abdominal probe offers an excellent overview. Place it in the mid-axillary line at the level of the nipple with the ultrasound beam in a cranial to caudal orientation. Trace along the mid-axillary line and locate the point where the diaphragm meets the thoracic wall. Note the waving lung tissue. If you see kidney, spleen or liver, you're too caudal. If you see only lung or a large black void, then you're too cranial. Let's briefly flip the ultrasound picture and superimpose it over the patient to further clarify the orientation. Looking between the ribs, you see the diaphragm, the fluid, and the lung. After choosing the puncture site, switch to the microconvex probe and set depth, gain, and focus so you have everything in order for when you're scrubbed up. It's possible to use a linear probe, but the small footprint and depth penetration of the microconvex are superior for this technique. Prep and drape. Make sure you have sufficient margins around the puncture site. Now prepare your tray. Here's our custom set with a 30 cm non-locking 8 French pigtail drain. Prepare it by straightening the pigtail and locking the metal stiffener. Remove the sharp tip central skewer. This is only used for the one-step approach. Use a super stiff guide wire that prevents kinking. And prepare it so it's ready for rapid insertion. Here's a list of suggested equipment. Now place the probe where the diaphragm meets the thoracic wall. Rotate the probe as demonstrated. As you'll be using the in-plane approach, this rotation results in a cannula path towards the patient's back. This leads the guide wire to the desired location, and where the guide wire goes, the drain will follow. Cannulation requires that you identify the following structures. The diaphragm, the pleural line, the lower and upper rib, and these ribs present as hyperechoic lines with a black ultrasound shadow underneath. The neurovascular bundle is generally found just caudal to the upper rib. The artery can often, but not always, be visualized with color Doppler. Here's an example from another patient. Cannulation requires excellent in-plane technique. Choose a clean path between the ribs and avoid the no-go zone where you expect the neurovascular bundle. There is absolutely no need to have a halfway stop on the lower rib, as would be the case in the blind approach. Anesthetize with a long-acting local. Aim to reach the pleural line without puncturing it. 5 milliliters will flood the intercostal space and reach the nerve. Switch to the steel cannula. Place your thumb over the hub and follow the planned trajectory. 
make a brief pause when the tip reaches the pleura and assess the ultrasound image through the patient's breathing cycle. Note how the position of the lung and the diaphragm shift. Sometimes you may have to ask the patient to hold their breath at the point in the breathing cycle when conditions are optimal. The puncture should be decisive enough to penetrate the pleura, but not too deep as you risk hitting the diaphragm or the lung. Visually confirm the needle tip in the pleural effusion. Here, once again, in slow motion. Pleural fluid will usually start dripping out, but occasionally small amounts of air may be sucked in. At this point, do not put down the probe. The tissue rebound may dislodge the cannula. Have the guide wire ready and insert it under real-time ultrasound guidance. It should pass freely and you should see it descend along the diaphragm. At this point, inform the patient that there may be some minor discomfort. This is a critical safety advantage of this technique. We confirm that the guide wire is not in the abdomen, not in the lung, and not extra thoracic before potentially causing more extensive damage with the dilator or the drain. Now remove the cannula and use a scalpel to make a very small skin incision. Use an 8 French dilator. It should pass easily as the guide wire is super stiff, which prevents kinking. Insert the drain. Once the tip is inside the thorax, unscrew the lock and slide the drain in without advancing the stiffener further. Connect the drain and make sure you attach it securely to the chest wall as shown. Fasten the drainage tubing in the ventricodal direction, once again considering patient comfort. Secure the line with a flexitrack or similar device. This CT shows the tip in the optimal location, dorsal and caudal. In our opinion, real-time ultrasound guidance is mandatory for all pigtail drains. The widely used pre-scan and then blind puncture is not good enough. The Seldinger approach offers many advantages, but the most important of which is safety. A word of caution though. We make this look easy, but there is definitely a learning curve. We recommend expert supervision if you're starting out, or drop us a line if you want us to come to your hospital and hold a workshop. And check out our other material at interanist.org.